Hi, I'm Pio from Ratings.com. Today, we'll look at a TCL Q6 QLED. It's a budget offering in TCL's 2023 Q-Series lineup of TVs, sitting just above the TCL Q5 and below the TCL Q7. It has a lot of good things going for it, and it's a particularly good option for gamers. But is it competitive with other products in its price range? We've bought and tested the 65-inch model, but our results are also valid for the 55, 75, and 85-inch models. Like almost every TV on the market, it has very thin bezels on three sides, with a slightly thicker bottom bezel. It looks good, if unremarkable. When it comes to build quality, this TV is just all right. The upper half of the TV's back panel is made of metal and feels quite solid, with minimal flex, but the bottom portion is made of plastic, which has a lot of flex to it. The TV comes with a set of plastic feet, and they support it well with just a bit of wobble when it's being pushed. You can adjust the width of the feet. They have a wide option, with the feet further apart, and a narrow option where the feet are much closer together. When in a narrower position, the feet are close enough that a longer soundbar won't fit well, or at all, between them. As for height, both positions lift the TV about 2.7 inches from the table, high enough that many soundbars won't block the screen. The TV has three HDMI ports, one USB 3.0 port, a LAN port, a digital optical audio out port, a 3.5 millimeter analog audio out port, and a composite in port, which requires an adapter that is not included with the TV. One of the HDMI ports doubles as an eARC port, but none of the HDMI ports have HDMI 2.1 bandwidth, so it's limited to 4K at 60 Hz. Although, this TV does have an interesting 120 Hz feature, which we'll talk about in the gaming section, so stay tuned for that. The ports are all side-facing, but they're near the center of the TV, making them hard to reach when the TV is wall-mounted. However, there are clips on both sides of the TV to help with cable management. The TV comes with version 11 of the popular Google TV smart interface. Google TV is a very powerful smart OS that gives you full access to the Google Play Store. It has a ton of apps and is very smooth to use. Like on all TVs, there are ads throughout the interface that you can't turn off. The TV's remote is medium-sized with a simple layout. It has buttons for quick access to the most popular streaming apps, and it has built-in voice control. Pretty typical stuff. Okay, the TV's design is functional, but how's the image quality? Well, to start, the TV's contrast is decent. In fact, it's quite good for a TV without local dimming, displaying deep blacks overall. Still, blacks are raised whenever bright highlights are on the screen, so it can't really compete on this front against other products with local dimming, such as the Hisense U6K. But this does mean that this TV has no blooming whatsoever around bright highlights or subtitles, with no unsightly lighting zone transitions. They're slim victories for sure, and they're certainly not a good trade for local dimming, but you gotta be happy with what you got in life. Local dimming goes hand in hand with good HDR, as it lets the TV truly emphasize bright highlights against the rest of the image. The Q6 can't emphasize highlights, and it won't look as good as some of its competitors in a dark room since it lacks local dimming, but its HDR brightness is surprisingly good at this price point. Imagine that! The TV is very bright and it stays bright all the time. Not bad. Its reflection handling is decent too. So overall, this TV is bright enough to look fine in well-lit rooms and excels in dimmer contexts. SDR content looks bright and punchy on this TV, with little variation in brightness. This TV is bright enough that you might have to lower its peak brightness when watching it in darker rooms. We've certainly seen brighter TVs, but at this price point, it's impressive. What is less impressive is this TV's viewing angle. As with many budget LED TVs, its viewing angle is not great. The image fades and looks washed out as you move even slightly off center, and at wider angles, it fades out to the point of looking as if someone had turned down the TV's backlight. Heck, at extremely wide angles, the TV almost looks like it's turned off. It really isn't a good TV for a wide seating arrangement or hosting large parties, but again, very few budget TVs are. Even less impressive is this TV's pre-calibration SDR image accuracy. It's quite poor. It has terrible white balance, with blues and reds being overrepresented in all shades of gray except blacks. The TV's gamma is too bright in all content. It fares a bit better in its color accuracy, although undersaturated colors show a fair amount of accuracy errors. Overall, this TV really isn't accurate out of the box. 
Most people are not likely to care, but if you're a color purist, this will bother you. Luckily, you can improve the TV's accuracy with calibration. But it's always annoying when a budget TV requires that, since a good calibrator might cost you almost as much as what you paid for the TV. Thankfully, the TV's HDR brightness follows the PQ UTF curve extremely closely. Like most LED TVs, near blacks are raised a bit, but after that, the TV tracks the content creator's intent very well. This is a QLED TV, so it unsurprisingly has a great color gamut. It has a fantastic coverage of the DCI-P3 color space, which is used in most HDR content. Its greens, yellows, and cyans are a bit undersaturated, but overall, colors are what they should be. Its coverage of the wider Rec 2020 space isn't quite as good. It really struggles with bright, saturated colors here, especially greens and cyans. Moving on to processing, this TV is pretty mid. Its low-quality content smoothing is inadequate. It doesn't seem to do much, and what it is doing isn't very good. Its detail preservation is decent, but it barely smooths out any macro blocking. Its upscaling is a bit better, but that isn't saying much, as it's barely adequate. The text is clear enough, but the overall image ends up looking muddy, so it's definitely not the best upscaling performance we've ever seen. Like most TVs, it uses pulse width modulation, or PWM, to dim its backlight. The TV's PWM can be as low as 150Hz, which is low enough to give you a headache if you're sensitive to flicker. Thankfully, the TV is flicker-free at certain brightness levels and picture modes. TLDR, as long as you don't have the TV's brightness set very low, you won't have any flicker. If you're watching movies with a Blu-ray player or a streaming box, or are using the built-in apps, it can remove 24p judder from any 24p source. Unfortunately, it cannot remove judder from any 60Hz source, unless it has a match frame rate feature, like on the Apple TV. Now, time for some gaming. When it comes to response time, this TV is decent, and most content looks fine. There's some noticeable blurring on this TV, but it's not excessive. Like many LED TVs, the response time is noticeably slower when coming out of dark states. This occurs when the TV's image is dark and then quickly switches to a brighter image, and it also applies to the presence of bright highlights on an otherwise dark screen. You'll see a blurry trail behind the brighter object, which we call smearing. This is not the TV to play horror games on. Try to stick to brighter, happier titles. Yay! <laughs> the TV's input lag is extremely good. Gaming on this thing is super responsive, and it's even capable of displaying Chroma 444 properly with a low input lag, as long as you're in PC picture mode. Now, we're getting to the good part. This TV has no HDMI 2.1 inputs, so it tops out at 4K at 60Hz, but it has a nifty resolution halving feature, which lets it display 1080p and 1440p at 120Hz. This does result in slightly worse image quality, but it's not very noticeable, and for most gamers, the increased FPS is almost certain to be worth the slight degradation in image quality. It's a great feature at this price point, and this makes the Q6 one of the best value gaming TVs that you can get. Plus, the TV's VRR range is very wide and works throughout the entire 120Hz range when playing at 1080p and 1440p, which is just excellent for fast, nearly tear-free gaming. For consoles, well, this TV is impressive. Sure, it cannot do 4K at 120Hz, but it otherwise can do 1080p and 1440p at 120Hz through resolution halving, with full VRR support. Unfortunately, the Xbox consoles only support HDR with 4K content, so the TV automatically sets itself to 4K at 60Hz when launching Dolby Vision or HDR content. If you want 120Hz gaming on your Xbox, you'll have to disable HDR. The TV has an auto low latency mode, so it switches automatically to game mode when it detects a console. Overall, it's a pretty darn good gaming TV. Coming to the speakers, well, they're not great. The speakers on TVs are never really good, but on this TV, they're worse than usual. If you don't care about sound at all, they'll do the job. They can get quite loud, which is nice, but they have a middling frequency response and the bass is awful. It fares better when it comes to distortion, as it sounds pretty distortion-free at lower volumes. Just don't listen to this TV at max volume, since the sound is quite distorted when the volume is cranked up. Still, as always, just get a soundbar. The TV passes through a ton of advanced audio formats from Dolby, which is great. For DTS, it cannot pass through the full 7.1 DTS-X or DTS-HD formats, as it's limited to DTS 5.1. So, for those of you still enjoying your physical media on DVD, you'll be satisfied, but if you've upgraded to Ultra HD Blu-rays, not so much. So, should you buy this TV? 
If you're a gamer, absolutely. This TV's resolution affing feature is an excellent addition to this budget model, and it makes the Q6 the best budget TV for competitive gamers. It's also no slouch when it comes to image quality, as it gets very bright in SDR and HDR. Plus, its contrast is decent for a TV without local dimming. There is a cheaper option though, the TCL Q5. The Q5's two biggest sizes, the 55 and 65 inch models, have the same feature set as the Q6 with almost identical image quality, although the Q6 is more accurate in HDR and has slightly better HDR gradient handling. Sure, the Q5 is a bit dimmer, but it's also cheaper. Unless you're using your TV in a bright room, the Q5 is the better value. If you're not a gamer, then the iSense Q6K is the better overall product due to its local dimming feature and much better color accuracy in SDR. While the iSense's local dimming isn't the best we've seen, as it has noticeable lighting zone transitions, it gives the TV extremely good contrast for a model at this price point, enhancing its movie watching capabilities. Though the high sense is dimmer in HDR than the TCL, its local dimming feature lets it emphasize highlights better, making HDR more impactful on that model. Gamers should get the TCL Q6 or TCL Q5, while everyone else will be better served with the high sense. That's all we have to say about the TCL Q6 QLED. If you want a more detailed write-up on a TV, check out our written review. The link is in the description below. Until next time, I'm Pio from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. So it can't really compete on this front against other products with local. With, sorry. So it can't really compete on this front against other products with local. Ah. So it can't really compete. Oh. So. So. <laughs> what is less impressive is this TV's viewing angle. <laughs> this is this. This is. This.